Hi, I'm Matt Needham, and this is my lecture on troubleshooting basic controls. Now, when we say troubleshooting, we mean trying to figure out what's wrong with a system when uh, generally it's not working. Um, so we're going to be going over a couple of different schematic diagrams, and really by process of elimination, getting down and figuring out which component uh, is bad and needs to be replaced, um, what is the trouble, and uh, we say troubleshooting is the figuring out of what is the problem. First, let's start here with um, this simple diagram, and this is um, uh, like a circuit, actually like a very old circuit where you'd use a light to heat some well water or something like that. You have a hot and a neutral, and if you're measuring voltage here, you'd read 115 volts or 120 volts. And if this switch is open, and it's the only thing that's open in the circuit, you would also read 115 volts because you have a reference back to neutral. Now, the electrical load here that we're trying to energize is a light. Okay, this is a fuse. Um, this is a heating thermostat. And when we close this switch, then the light would illuminate. And you would read here 115 or 120 volts and the light would be illuminating. When we say volts, we're not saying whether something is hot or not. We're saying what's the difference between two points? Is there a potential difference? So even if this light bulb were to burn out or you unscrewed the light bulb, you would still have the difference, the potential, the pressure there of 115 volts. Now, let's say that this switch is open and the thermostat is also open now. The heating thermostat is, is open. Then you would not have a reference point back to the neutral, so you would be reading zero volts here. Now, if I touched this, I would get shocked because now my feet uh, through my body creates that path to ground and I would get shocked and we have to be very careful about these things. Um, now, if I were to close this switch here and we took the um, difference here, it would be zero because we, again, don't have any difference between these two points and this thermostat is open. Again, if I touched right here, now I would get shocked. And if we come here, now this is where the only thing that is open, we read 115 volts. We close it and the light would illuminate and it would get the full voltage. Now, if both of them are open here, again, you would read, what would you read here? Zero between this point and this point, zero, 115. What would you read here? Zero. The electrons are not getting across to this side of the load. Okay, let's try uh, something a little bit uh, different now so we can understand a little bit difference between 115 volts and 230 volts. Let's say this is L1 and L2. And you have a ground so L1 to ground would be 115 volts. L2 to ground is 115 volts. Together, it's 230 volts. Think of it like this. Um, if you have a stock car and it's going down a track and it runs into a block wall, the difference is 115. If you had another car that was coming from this direction, 115 miles an hour, and it ran into the other side of the block wall, 115. If they're playing chicken and there's no block wall and they both come at 115 miles an hour, the force is the impact 230 volts. So under this 230 volts here, let's see, uh, what do we get um, here? Well, we get um, zero volts because there's no uh, reference point there. And what would we get right here. Well, we'd get the 230 and here we would get zero. Okay. 
here we would get um, zero. And then, now we also said that if this was closed, now what would you read here? You would read 230 volts because you have 115 coming from this side and 115 coming from this side, 230 volts, okay? So that's a little bit of understanding about taking some voltage readings and what they mean on this very simple diagram. Now let's go over to this more complex diagram um, now. We'll be building um, uh, this diagram as we go. There's some interesting things. I've kind of needamized it, if you like, uh, similar to a diagram uh, in textbook Unit 15, Refrigeration Air Conditioning Technology. Um, but I've kind of done things my own way and enhanced it. I feel like it's better. First, we'll notice that I'm using three different colors here. Um, well, really four or five different colors, but for the cooling, I'm using blue. Everything you see in blue is involved in the cooling. Everything in red is for the heating. And everything in green is for the fan, to bring on the fan, the indoor fan, okay? Some other things let's go over. Let's uh, go over the electrical loads. What are the electrical loads in this circuit? Generally on a diagram, our electrical loads are always drawn on the right-hand side and the switches are drawn on the left. And that's what we have here. We have a compressor motor, a condenser fan motor, an electric heater, an indoor fan motor, an indoor fan relay, a contactor coil, and a heating relay coil. These are all the electrical loads. Over here on the left, we have the contactor contact, which is like a switch, heating relay contacts, an indoor fan relay contact, and then the thermostat switching over here on the left is part of the switching, okay? In the center here, we have a transformer. Yes, we have L1 and L2, 230 volts, and it would be stepping it down to um, 24 volts here, like in a little package unit or something. Okay, 24 volts. Now, first of all, let's say we have a service call and the customer complains or whatever, like, you know, uh, well, I never get any heating or, or cooling out of the system, or just come check it out. Okay, so you go and one of the first things I like to do is as I'm talking to the customer, I will take the fan and just throw it to the on position, leaving the thermostat in the off position. Now, while they're talking, if I hear the unit come on, if I hear the airflow coming out of the supplier vent and feel that airflow, that tells me a lot just by throwing that to on. What does that tell me? It tells me that the circuit breaker is okay. It tells me that the disconnect switch up here is closed. It tells me that the main fuses are good. It tells me that the transformer is good. It tells me that the indoor fan relay is good and the indoor fan motor and the uh, capacitor that serves it is good. All of that, and so I've already eliminated, you see the process of elimination is a big part of troubleshooting. I've already eliminated those as the reason for why, you know, what's wrong with the system. It's not those things. So then I can take it from there, okay? And let's look here at why. First, if we throw this to on, the indoor fan relay energizes the coil and this is getting 24 volts. As we said, the transformer is stepping it down from 230 to 24 volts. This energizes on 24 volts and it closes the indoor fan relay contact and power comes through the run winding and the start winding and the run capacitor gives it a boost and helps the motor run efficiently and the fan comes on and run. And all three of the motors that are used in this diagram are PSC motors, permanent split capacitor motors, in that each one of the motors have a run capacitor and nothing else. And the run capacitor always stays in the system the entire time any motor runs. Um, and so if 
a motor only has a run capacitor, no other kind of relays or start capacitors, it's a PSC motor, which is very typical of um, systems um, for residences like commercial, the PSC motor. Okay? Um, now, if we found out that the fan wasn't running, okay, and we measured that we had 230, we had 24 volts here at the fan, indoor fan relay, but it wasn't closing the contacts and we did have 230 volts here, we could pretty much assume that the indoor fan relay is bad. We could ohm out the coil um, and we could try to replace it and see if that then causes the indoor fan motor to run. Uh, we should certainly ohm this out before we, we do that, but most likely the problem is going to be the indoor fan relay if you're getting voltage to the indoor fan relay coil, but the contacts are not closing and they're staying open, stuck open, then we would replace that, okay? So now let's go through um, some cooling operation where the fan's in auto, you throw it to cool, and this is the cooling thermostat that makes on a temperature rise. When a room or a zone gets too warm, the thermostat it um, rises up and closes and energizes our contactor coil here. Closing this set of contacts on the contactor. And when that closes, then the compressor gets power and starts to run. This is the run winding. Here's the start winding. See how I drew it with more resistance on the start winding? And we have the run capacitor. It gives the start winding a boost. The run capacitor is there for the start winding. And um, the compressor comes on. Now the compressor motor and the condenser fan motor are wired in parallel with each other. So that when the compressor runs, the power comes down and also energizes the condenser fan motor that is electrically very similar here to our compressor and it comes on. But now we ask, well, what about the indoor fan motor? We're stuck over here in auto. How do we get this on? Notice that when this closes, yes, power comes to the contactor, but it also feeds the indoor fan relay here and it closes and it brings on our indoor fan motor. Now, if that indoor fan relay was bad and you put the unit here into cooling, what's going to happen is the compressor is going to run, the condenser fan motor is going to run, and the indoor um, fan motor is not going to run. And you're not going to get any cooling and you'll start to probably ice up your evaporator coil and you might even get some liquid slugging in your compressor, some liquid refrigerant in your compressor because it's not boiling off in the evaporator. Now, um, if, every, if the indoor fan motor is working okay and the compressor is working okay and the condenser fan, then you are going to be cooling. And generally, in most air conditioning systems, we drop the temperature about 20 degrees from whatever the air is going into the unit. The air that comes out should be about 20 degrees colder. If the relative humidity is very low, like 15, 20, 30 percent, you may be dropping the temperature 23 degrees, 24 degrees. On the other hand, if the relative humidity is very high, it's almost raining out, it's 90 percent relative humidity, you may only be able to drop the temperature 18 degrees. Both scenarios, the system's okay, it's just doing the best it can with a latent load. Now, um, if neither the compressor runs or the condenser fan runs in this situation, but the indoor fan runs, we should suspect what the compressor and the condenser fan motor have in common, and that would be the contactor. Either the coil might be burned open, most likely, or the contacts are frozen uh, open, and um, we would have to then replace the um, contactor. Again, if you're getting 24 volts here, but this isn't closing to give you the voltage you need for the motors, replace the contactor. 
process of elimination. Now, um, let's look at heating a little bit on uh, this circuit. We're using a heating relay. And again, this thermostat, the heating thermostat is, when it gets cold, it contracts and would close the circuit and energizes the heating relay. And when we do that, this closes. And then you have a limit switch, which is there above the heater and uh, would open up if the temperature uh, in your supplier got too high for safety. We energize the electric heater and we also have just like a safety current fuse here going over there. And at the same time we energize this, we're, see how it's in red also? This is um, uh, a double pole, single throw switch where when this closes, this also closes and um, you get power from here and this heating relay closes not only this contact but also this contact which then allows the indoor fan motor to come on. Okay, and so the, the heater's on, the electric heater's on, and then the indoor fan um, comes on and blows in. Now, electric heat isn't very popular, that popular anymore, because it's very expensive. Um, although, I don't know, my intuition is it might make a tiny comeback, get a little more popular because of the new laws in California of low NOx, very everybody having to put in only super high efficiency furnaces for natural gas. So I, I have heard a lot recently that heat pumps are going in a lot more, but maybe there's a, a little bit of a place for a somewhat more modern, efficient electric heating system. We're going to have to see about that going forward. Okay. Now, um, if your if you got a call, a service call, and it said, hey, no heat, but no matter what I do, if I put it, the thermostat in heating, um, the indoor fan comes on. If I put the thermostat fan to on, the indoor fan comes on, but I can never get any warm air out of it. What are the possible suspects? See if you can think for a minute of one of the things that can be bad in that regard. Okay, so... Yeah, it could be that most likely it's not the heating relay because the coil's good because in auto position, this is closing, causing the indoor fan to come on. So it's probably not the heating relay unless this single contact was just stuck open, which would be highly unlikely. So then a lot of people say, well, you know, the limit switch is bad um, or the fuse could be bad, which is true. But also, you know what, sometimes just, Go as simple as you can. Just go Neanderthal on it. You know, no heat, bad heater. So maybe the heater is bad. Maybe that wasn't your first choice, but no heat, bad heater. So maybe the heater's burned open and it's bad um, and would have to maybe be uh, replaced. So those are some of the options if you had no heat. Let's also look at this. Let's say the customer called and said nothing works. Nothing's happening at all. I mess with the thermostat. I can't get air, heat, cooling. I hear nothing. Nothing. Make me happy. Okay. So what are the possible problems with that description? Okay. Try to think one for a moment. All right. So actually, it's not on the diagram, but the circuit breaker could be tripped. The disconnect could just be off. Is that possible? One time I had to drive like 60 miles uh, from the San Fernando Valley to Lancaster just to find a disconnect off on a roof. And that was it. Okay, that Things like that happen. A main fuse could be bad and then you don't get any power. The transformer could be bad. The thermostat could be bad. Those are kind of the things that everything has in common. Is it likely that it's a, a relay? No, because nothing's working. No loads are working. They hear nothing, okay? So that's troubleshooting uh, a little bit for you. Now, 
Um, let's uh, look here uh, a little more explanation about the limit switch. The limit switch um, by code, a uniform mechanical code, says it can never be, you know, set up 250 degrees or above. Most likely it's way lower than that, like 160 degrees would open up, something like that. Um, and it's there to prevent the heater if it gets too hot in the plenum. Now, what are some reasons why it might get too hot? Think for a moment. Why would it overheat, get too much heat? Try and think of a reason for a moment. All right, now, um, it could be just a bad limit switch, but highly unlikely, okay? It could be that uh, this contact is bad or the run capacitor itself is bad that serves this, or the actual indoor fan motor is bad because once the electric heater comes on, it's counting on the fact that the fan is gonna be dissipating that heat. And if the fan doesn't come and take the heat and dump it into the room, then right above the heater, it gets hotter and hotter and hotter until the limit switch goes off. So actually any restriction in airflow, a very plugged dirty air filter can cause the limit switch to trip off because you're not getting enough airflow. If all the supplies are closed or the return air is blocked or something like that, again, lack of airflow for any kind uh, would be a reason why the limit switch um, would open. Let's talk for a minute just about air conditioning cooling, about the concept of why a unit might ice up, okay? Electrically first. Electrically, um, here we see that, again, if the indoor fan motor is bad, the run capacitor is bad, uh, if the indoor fan relay is bad and the compressor is running without it, then you would ice up um, the system here off this diagram. Now, there's a lot of troubleshooting, <coughs> a lot of reasons why, non-electrical reasons why, a unit might ice up. I'll give you some of those. Again, a dirty air filter, a dirty evaporator, um, a thermostat just set too low, which you find in commercial applications on Friday afternoons. People go out, they have a couple of margaritas, a long lunch, they eat the salty, the chips and salsa, they're, right? They come back, the boss is left early at lunch, the workers say, me make thermostat, me make it colder faster, me put to 55 which doesn't work. And then they cool off and then they think they'll sneak out early at 3.30. And then the air conditioning unit's like, hey, I've always wanted to be a cooler. I've always wanted to do refrigeration. This is my chance. This weekend, nobody's watching. No one's regulating me, the thermostat. And you know what? It goes, let's go for it. And it tries. And when the room temperature gets somewhere around 61 or 62, it starts to ice up because now your saturation temperature is below 32 for a long period of time and you start building ice on your evaporator and you ice up um, the coil. Again, any reason that you have lack of airflow uh, at all will cause a system uh, to ice up. So that about wraps things up for troubleshooting basic controls going over these um, two diagrams. Thank you.